Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the Chrysler 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine, specifically the Eagle version from 2009 until the present day. Of course, this Hemi was introduced back in 2003, but there were various revisions made for the 2009 model year, including the introduction of variable camshaft timing. This Eagle 5.7 Hemi is an extremely popular engine found in 11 different Chrysler applications, and probably more coming in the future, and it was built at a profit, making it a financial success. But today we're not here to talk about the success of the 5.7 Hemi, but rather the fatal flaw that has damaged so many engines. This is essentially part 2 in this fatal flaw Hemi series. Part 1 covered the pre-Eagle 2003-2008 to 5.7s, which had the major issue of premature dropping valve seats. And of course this Eagle Hemi has a totally different problem of lifters seizing and wearing down the camshaft lobes. I saw many comments about this, so I wanted to give my take on things and shed some light on the issue, especially if you're considering buying a used vehicle that has this Hemi. I believe this will be one of the most comprehensive videos on this topic, where I'll cover the technical issue and damage caused, warning signs and symptoms, when does it happen, some reasons that could explain why this is such a problem, and what you could possibly do to prevent this issue. And finally, we'll look at what Chrysler has done and said about all of this. One other important note, this is a massively discussed topic that's all over the internet over the past 10 years or so, so when making this video I tried to take a pretty neutral stance, and I've spent many days going through forums, collecting opinions, watching videos, and just trying to facilitate discussion and talk about the issue. I don't have the be all end all answers to what exactly might cause it, or what might prevent it, as those answers are very tough to find, so I've just had kind of a compilation of different theories and what different people have said. I acknowledge that many may feel strongly about this issue one way or another, I've seen so many arguments and name calling over who's right about why it happens or what can be done to fix it, and I do think these other opinions are all valid, they have good arguments behind them, and I certainly won't deny any other arguments that explain this issue that may be different from what I say in this video. Anyways, first we will look at the specs of this engine. So this engine was revised for the 2009 model year across the Chrysler lineup, after having debuted in the 2003 Dodge Ram 1500, 2500, and 3500 pickup trucks, and then countless models after that. The major revisions included the addition of variable camshaft timing and revised cylinder heads. Since 2009, this 5.7 Hemi has been found in many different vehicles that you can find on screen, including the new Jeep Wagoneer. This 5.7 was made into the Mercedes 5-speed automatic, and the Chrysler 5 and 6-speed manual transmissions, and more recently the ZF 8-speed automatic. Power output was rated at 390 to 395 horsepower and 407 to 410 pound-feet of torque in the Ram trucks, and 363 to 375 horsepower and 394 to 400 pound-feet of torque in the LX and LD vehicles. And the displacement is 345 cubic inches, so some refer to it as the 345 Hemi. One important feature was what Chrysler called the Multi-Displacement System, or MDS, which first came out on the 2006 Hemis. This deactivates 4 out of 8 cylinders when the throttle is closed or at steady highway speeds, and Chrysler claimed that it boosted fuel economy by 10-20%. to 20%. The MDS system was not included if there was a manual transmission. Interestingly, there were 5 different camshaft profiles for the Durango slash Aspen Hybrid, Ram Heavy Duties, Ram 1500s, Automatic Charger, Challenger, Durango, etc., and one for the Challenger manual. So let's get into this lifter and camshaft issue. First of all, what is the issue itself? This all starts with the infamous Hemi tick. This is some abnormal ticking coming from your engine bay that has been deemed normal by dealerships. It seems there are two different primary causes of this ticking. The first would be on a cold start. It usually goes away after a few minutes once the engine is heated up. And this would be an exhaust leak as the exhaust manifold bolts break, creating that leak. The second type of Hemi tick would be intermittent lifter ticking noise that you hear once the engine has reached ideal operating temperature. So many do confuse the two noises and they can be very tough to immediately diagnose one way or the other, but the latter one is more detrimental to your engine. The general consensus will suggest that the roller bearings in the lifter roller fail. These are also called needle bearings, and that causes the roller to seize and end up sliding or tapping on the cam lobe rather than rolling as it should. Another way of saying it is that the lifters are faulty and can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam. You can see in the quick video on screen that the seized lifter is barely moving. 
The lobes get worn down far enough to the point that the valves don't open up enough anymore, and you'll get a cylinder misfire. To go just a bit further into the explanation without getting too technical, inside the roller there are needle bearings which you can see on screen. These needle bearings wear out the supporting pin through them, so the surface of the roller lifter has too much play and up and down movement. That will cause more needle bearing damage, and they will eventually fail and drop down far enough that the sides of the bearing, or some people will also call them the ears, also contact the cam lobes, as the roller partially recesses into itself, exposing those ears. So not only is the lifter not rolling properly on the cam lobes due to the bearing, but the lifter ears are now exposed and can hit the cam, both of which cause damage. This requires lifters and camshaft replacement, about a four to $5,000 US job at a dealership. Another thing, some say that the MDS lifters are usually the ones that fail more often than the regular ones, and thus they blame MDS for the problem. However, I have found that across 769 complaints in my research, the number five cylinder was the most affected, which is not an MDS cylinder. Unless you have a check engine light though, it can be hard to know which cylinder is giving you the real problem. Overall, the cylinder affected seems to be all over the place, but it's definitely not just on the MDS lifters. There are some warning signs and symptoms, but it seems like there are intermittent problems, or they aren't noticed until there's some damage. Some symptoms do include ticking that sounds like a sewing machine, shaking, stalling, vibration that comes and goes, shuddering, misfires, and a misfire check engine light for the problem cylinder. When the lifters collapse, the valves will get stuck and won't go up and down, so you get that misfire. As for when it happens in the vehicle's life, across a sample size of about a thousand Hemis, the average mileage of the affected vehicles for this issue was 118,500 miles. So it is a problem that happens gradually over the life of the vehicle, and not something that will usually affect it very early on. As for which vehicles are actually affected, I saw that a lot of 2011 to 2013 models are affected across the whole lineup of Hemis, so Charger, Challengers, Rams, Jeeps, you name it. There's also a lot of fleet cars, work trucks, and cop cars that are affected, and that's because these vehicles idle extensively, so we'll get into that in a bit. So now we reach the toughest question of all, why does this happen? This question has sparked an incredible amount of debate to the point where you hear new ideas with every search if you're open to listening. I've compiled a few different reasons why people think this happens, so we'll go over a bunch of them that could contribute to the answer. Again, there are lots of theories out there. I can't say for sure what the exact reason may be, or if it could be a variety of these factors. I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about some of them as well. So let's get into these theories. Lack of lubrication to the needle bearings. So this one basically says that there's simply a lack of lubrication to the needle bearings, the roller, or the cam lobes themselves. The lifters are oiled through the push rod, and there's nothing to feed oil through the lifters to actually get to the needle bearings inside. So that's one theory that not enough oil gets to the needle bearings, then they fail and the lifter seizes. Whatever the theory, it all comes back to those failing needle bearings at the end of the day, as they seem to be the weakest link in this engine. Another theory would be that there's just too much idling going on between oil changes, which would explain why this issue is so prevalent on vehicles that have idled extensively throughout their lives, like police cars, work trucks, rentals, and others. We're all trained to do oil changes based on the mileage, but that doesn't take into account idle hours or time spent idling, as of course you don't rack up a single mile when you are idling. That means that these police cars aren't getting their oil changed frequently enough, and of course the enforcement agencies, or anybody for that matter, try to save money on their vehicle costs, so they're very likely to delay oil changing as long as they can. The oil then can become very dirty, breaking down to the point that it no longer lubricates the needle bearings correctly, causing them to seize. Others will claim that this is simply a quality control issue, aka a part defect, arguing that cheap crappy lifters were used during a time where Chrysler was bankrupt in August of 2009 and didn't fully recover until 2012. We saw a lot of 2011 to 2013 models affected, so that's when those poorly built lifters might have been used the most. It could also be that the pins that the needle bearings ride on are made from steel that just isn't hard enough, causing premature wear. FCA also admitted that they had some bad lifters from their vendors between 2009 and 2014, so those engines seem more susceptible to this issue. Others will claim that the stock oil 5W20 is just too thin, and that a thicker viscosity, something like a 5W30, is better for the engine. Unfortunately, there's just no long-term tests to prove this, 
and Chrysler engineers relentlessly argue that using the improper viscosity can trigger a check engine light and just isn't the best method for this engine. Some are claiming that there are lubrication issues with these Gen 3 Hemis, pointing at the main oil feed between the assembly and camshaft that physically obstructs the lifters and cam, resulting in less oil being slung off and finding those pieces. So this theory claims that those parts are mostly lubricated by splash, and while the hydraulic part of the lifter is fed oil through push rods, there's no oil galley to support the lifters, and the needle bearings don't get lubricated other than slung or splashed oil from the reciprocating assembly. There's not enough splash due to the angle of the lifters and blockage due to the main oil passage. However, the damage itself seems totally random, so if this theory was the case, then wouldn't there be more consistency? Also, if it was a true design flaw and the lifters not getting oiled, I believe it would affect many more Hemis than the roughly 5% that it does. Another factor here is that the camshaft was raised and the lifters were flattened in order to improve valve train geometry. With the awkward lifter and push rod angles, it can cause more stress and wear, and this angle can also contribute to not keeping the lifters full of oil at all times. Of course, that means there's also less flow to the needle bearings, making it easier for them to seize up and stick. Another theory would be that MDS, or the multi-displacement system that shuts off the four cylinders under certain conditions, either causes this issue or can possibly help fix the issue. From my research, allowing the engine to go into MDS mode seems to lubricate the lifters by pressurizing the lifter bores when the MDS is engaged, as the solenoid that controls the oil pressure is activated. That would explain the idle failures, as during idling, MDS is not engaged and it will not lubricate the lifters properly. However, I just don't know how much of a contributing factor MDS is, as we see both MDS and non-MDS lifters failing, and also some vehicles like the Ram Heavy Duties don't even have MDS to begin with, but they still have this problem. Finally, the last theory is that some folks claim this is a deliberate design flaw in order to make you buy a new engine and or sell a lot of parts. It is true that many engineering budgets for all types of products are spent on design obsolescence, and of course Chrysler hasn't acknowledged this or accepted it that there's a problem. However, this theory seems pretty outrageous, and deliberately including a flaw of this magnitude would be pretty dumb if that was true, as they'd be fined and sued heavily, and of course the reliability and reputation has been tarnished because of it. So with that being said, let's look at tips you can do to try to prevent this issue. The first thing that's absolutely critical is to do oil changes in proper intervals. Every 3,000 miles would be a safe bet. And if you know you idle a lot, base those oil changes off the engine hours which can be found in the cluster. Don't give your oil a chance to break down and get dirty. FCA says, quote, change the oil every 320 hours for severe usage, end quote. So that's roughly two weeks for a car running 24-7. The second thing to do would be use a quality synthetic oil at the manufacturer's recommended 5W20. The synthetic oil will improve the lubrication and viscosity of the oil, and it won't break down as quickly from the heat. The third tip would be to change your driving habits, so try to idle less and drive at higher RPMs more. The final tip would be some preventative maintenance, and that's to simply replace the lifters before they fail. Some will replace the MDS lifters with standard solid lifters, but then turn on MDS so there's more lubrication to the lifters, they just won't collapse or shut off. That's obviously untested, but some say the MDS lifters fail a little bit more, and the solid lifters don't quite as much, so why not replace them for additional safety? After all, it is a performance application, so you don't really care about the four-cylinder aspect anyways, it's only there for the government EPA. There's also some high-lift Johnson lifters, which were specifically designed and updated in 2018 to correct all of these failures and issues. That new design oils the needle bearings better than OEM, and they claim they have tighter manufacturing tolerances for better quality. And there's also the OEM Hellcat lifters which can be used, as they are the non-MDS style lifter. So, what does Chrysler say about all of this? Well, so far, nothing. They haven't really denied this is an issue, but there have been back orders for a long time on these lifters. The issue seems to affect at least 5% of the Hemis, it may seem like more online because everybody's talking about them, but they make close to a million Hemis every year, and the people that complain are always going to be the most vocal about it. Of course, Chrysler doesn't want to fix or redesign the Hemi for an issue that only affects 5%. They would simply rather take on the warranty costs, or let you pay out of the pocket for it, as that costs them a lot less money. There will be no recalls, as those are government force for safety issues only. 
There's still also no TSB issued, so it seems as if Chrysler is just turning a blind eye to the problem and not even acknowledging it. The Hemi is due for an upgrade or update soon anyways, so I bet we see things change then. Chrysler also seems to have implemented some running changes, updating the lifter roller bearings in 2016. The new lifter was introduced in 2016 for MDS cars, so not including Hellcats and vehicles with the 6-speed manual transmission, and these lifters have heavier duty needle bearings and rollers, so that could point to our answer right there. Interestingly, the part number stayed the same for these lifters. Of course, we won't know for a while, as most of these Hemis are still relatively young, and 2017 and up models usually won't have over 100k miles on them by now. So finally, that's the end of this video on the fatal flaw of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. We've covered a lot, and I tried to break it down as best as I could. What do you guys think about this flaw I've described? And for those of you with one of these Hemis, have you experienced it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.